So David has made a stand for faith in his God by exposing the false fear of the Israelites and also the false boast of the Philistines on the basis of his true faith in God. David knows how powerful and mighty his God is. He's not going to allow any man, no matter how huge he might be, uh, to stand in the way of what God's going to be doing. And so he's exposed that. The next thing that David has to deal with are the false voices of those around him. If you like, the false teaching of people in his company. The first is his brother Eliab, who has heard what David has just had to say about Goliath. And Eliab says this, I know your arrogance and your evil heart. You came down to see the battle. So Eliab is attacking David's heart. He's saying your heart is evil. But we know that David was a man after God's own heart. So David's heart was filled with the sense of God's heart. But Eliab is challenging that, is confronting that. The next thing is Saul, who having heard David put himself forward to fight the Philistine, you know, laughs at him and says, you can't fight this Philistine. You're just a youth. So Saul questions David's ability. He essentially says, you're pathetic. One voice says, you're evil. The second voice says, you're pathetic. Now, David is the voice of faith. And what we have to understand is this. Faith always sounds like foolishness to those that don't have it. The voice of faith is the voice of folly to those who don't have it. Of course, the very idea of David taking on this giant is ridiculous. But in David's mind, it isn't him taking on the giant. It's his God taking on the giant of whom he is a, an ambassador, a representative. My friends, that's who we are. We are ambassadors. We represent our great king, our Lord Jesus Christ. And at this time, we must be clear what voices we're listening to. Because it may well be that you're feeling tempted to question your heart at this time. Am I really a son? Is my heart really a heart of faith? Maybe it's questioning the power of God to bring about the kind of deliverance that we're longing to see in this nation today. A true deliverance, a deliverance from the tyranny of darkness and evil into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God's son. So let me finish by quoting 1 Corinthians 1 verse 27, which says this, God has chosen what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God has chosen what is weak in the world to shame the strong. It always has been that way. It is that way today and it always will be. So therefore, let our boast be in the Lord. Our boast is in the life lived perfectly, the death died passionately, the resurrection given gloriously. That's our boast in Jesus Christ. Foolishness to the world, but it's our confidence as those of faith. Choose which voices you listen to at this time.